It's Mother's Day! We're... Ladies and gentlemen, Jeremy and I are here today and we have two very special guests. The um, most two special most, guests. It's the two people that we talk about all the time and uh, they never get a chance to... Um, Defend themselves? <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> They all, so first, let, let's make some introductions. Jeremy, go first. Yes, of course. I'm Jeremy. You know that. This is my mother right here, Rhonda Davis. Yes. Say hello, Mama. <laughs> my name is Clay Johnson, and this is my mother, Elaine Johnson. Hello. <laughs> and we brought them on today to basically set the record straight. We did. Number one, set the record straight. Actually, number one, to say Happy Mother's oh, Day. Oh, yes, of course. We love you. You guys are the greatest. And number two, to uh, set the record straight. Yes, to give them an opportunity to embarrass us. Embarrass us. They could we, we do a wonderful job of embarrassing ourselves all the time. Now we <laughs> thought we'd offer you the opportunity to do this. Same. Uh, all right, so uh, let's start with Miss Rhonda. Miss Rhonda? Yes. Um, explain, uh, describe to, to the audience um, kind of how you, um, your side of the story when it comes to how we met each other and how you and mom met each other. Okay. The, really, the first thing that I remember is that it was the first day of junior high school. That's a big day. The mother, uh huh, and the parents uh, took their children to school, and we went to each class and met each teacher and walked the hall exactly like how y'all would go as you would go to school. This was showing y'all because y'all were used to being in just one class the whole day. So this was a big deal. Y'all were going to have to remember where to go and not get lost. It's too much, Mama. I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> but that's what I remember. And, and y'all just happened to be, but y'all, as each class we would travel, we noticed that Clay and his mother were going the same way we were going to each and every class. So y'all were, you know, together all year long in the same class. That's right. Elaine, do you remember any, 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 any uh, anything about that faithful day? No, that that's the way I remember it. I remember <coughs> that, and that's, I, I guess, of course, Rhonda, I know we might have seen each other before that, but that's Probably. when I was the first remember meeting you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We probably and, should, we probably should point out, we probably should point out that uh, both our mothers are right now in West Monroe, Louisiana, probably five miles from each other. At the most. At the most. <laughs> and <laughs> quarantined, sharing from their uh, from their living rooms. Yes. And, and we, pro we probably, uh, yeah, and I guess we probably should. <laughs> And we probably should have started with reminding people of our story. Clay and I met in the seventh grade, and we've uh, been attached at the hip ever since. Um, and we, you know, we, we went through junior high together. Uh, we went through high school together, college together. We met our wives at the same time, got married two weeks apart, and all ended up moving out here to Savannah, Georgia. All right, so mom, tell, um, tell us an, a, an embarrassing story or something about us when we were first getting started as, as musicians and as friends. Well, well, first, I want to, to set up the record straight that y'all have been telling in your show. <laughs> oh, man. That we made you be friends. <laughs> we <laughs> and do. That, that there is a really good reason that that can't be true. Because <laughs> you two were 13 years old, and we were not the smartest people in the world in your eyes. <laughs> if we had wanted you to be friends, you wouldn't be friends. Uh, <laughs> good point. That's, good that's point. True. Yeah. And that's the truth. I Mama, thought Mama we, wants me to like that boy, so I ain't gonna like him. I thought we were the model children. I thought we were model sons. Me too. We were perfect in every way, like Mary Poppins. But you, you know, yes, yes. We had our moments. I, I tell you, one thing that tickled me was uh, seeing the first time in their band uniforms. Oh, oh, that was a that was a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mom right. with the so plume. So After and, you know, marching. Great fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, mom has a picture. I'll, I'll get mom to snap it and send it to us in a second. Mom has a picture yeah. of me and my uh, West Monroe Junior High sash uh -huh. and the plume. And I'm yes. and, I, and everybody was laughing so hard at me when I walked out. And I started laughing and I'm literally crying. <laughs> Laughing so hard in the picture <laughs> because I look like such a goofball with the plumes. You know, around. we should bring that back. We should bring the band new from plumes. Plumes. Just plumes is all we need. I'm telling you, we're going to find a gig. <laughs> we're going to put on uniforms with plumes through the whole gig. The plumes. whole gig with plumes. That's it. That's hey, it. I had to alter those uniforms. No. I was the uniform lady. 
to stay oh. in that little closet. <laughs> are, yeah. are, you, are you telling me that you and Donna, it was Donna in the, in the picture? Yes, yes, but I I was over the uniforms and she oh, was so called my helper. At oh, that time. wow. Well, you left it in good hands because that lady stayed there for 20 years. She has, she's still there. Yes, she's crazy. Is. Yes. Oh. Yeah. God bless her. Well, they said she will marry. She's going to be buried in a bank. <laughs> <laughs> and she, and you know what? She has you to thank for that moment. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. You got her. Yes. Yes. Well, so I here's. Had my baby had my youngest child. I kept her in a cardboard box in that office. To keep her out of everything while I was messing. That's your sister. It's my sister. Your I have sister. a big cardboard box that I have for Sydney that's, to that's keep her out of awesome. the problem. That's awesome. Probably traumatized her. So, Mom, do you remember when when we when we were when I was first? This was sixth grade, the year before, when we had to choose our musical instruments that we were going to play. Um, I remember that day. You, you know, because because Mr. Walker came to the to the all the yeah. to the um, the schools and. And had us try out different instruments. Do you remember what, what you wanted me to play? And, and I'll, what, because you, you didn't originally want me to play. Yeah. I wanted Clay to play the trumpet. And so I, I, t I, told, I told Mr. Walker that I wanted him to play the trumpet. Well, Mr. Walker came back and said he, he didn't know the lips for that. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get the lips on. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to sure play the trumpet. <laughs> well, this just goes to prove your point, Mom, that. You wanted me to play trumpet, and and I didn't even audition for the trumpet because I knew you wanted me to play it. So that, that oh. just kind of goes. <laughs> I'm gonna show her. Proves your point. Do you remember anything about that? <laughs> Do you remember anything about that day, Mom? Did you have any uh, inclination of what you wanted me to play at all? Do you remember any of that? Um, no, I really don't because. From the time you were two years old, you always had to have an instrument of some kind. We, we, you know, I, back in the day, they always had plastic trumpets, plastic saxophones, plastic drums, plastic guitars. He still, you know, he still sounds like he plays a plastic saxophone, quite honestly. And we it's always, like, we always had an overproduction of all those things. Uh, you were, so I, I, you know, you were telling me about a memory that you that you remember the other day, just about uh, an early musical memory. Why don't you tell that story? Okay. One day, uh, I was fixing lunch, and Jeremy was out in his room, had about four of his buddies, and had his little, one of his little sisters and one of her friends, and they were all in his room. I hear all kinds of commotion going on. So I opened up the door and peeked out there, and they were, he was probably about 11, something like that. And Jeremy had made instruments for the ones that he did not have, a toy instrument. He used cardboard boxes, whatever he could come up with, and made the instrument. And he had each one of them set up where he wanted them to play. Then he had his sister and her best friend. They had some of their dance costumes. They had lots of sequins and they had flashlights. And they were shining them on those costumes. It's a show. See, it's a show right there, right? Oh. See, it's, they ought to call me Showtime. And I think he had a wooden spoon. He had a wooden spoon. Oh, uh, directing the band. And he was hollering, and I you you supposed to come in now. Yeah. And I, he was just directing and fussing, and they were all cringing like it was a real family. Yeah, we still cringe and, when he does that. Uh, <laughs> it was, and I just shut the door and let them have eggs. They were having fun. Uh, it was meant to be. Then jump forward several, several, several years out, yes, and we were at the Strauss Theater for uh, what was like their first you know, concert type thing. And I was sitting up in the balcony and I was just looking around watching people and the curtain goes up and there's this staircase, the winding staircase that comes down into the middle of the stage. And all the rest of the orchestra, you know, was sitting around <clears throat> and the spotlight hits that staircase. Jared, and it just right on Jared. Is this a true story? It's a true story. And he comes walking down the stairs and I'm like, oh, what? Was I there? I wasn't there. This may have been. This is his dream. This is, I mean, tears are just going down my face because it was like, he was doing this when he was 10 years old. I had arrived. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Was, that the, was it the Christmas? I remember this. Was that a Christmas concert? Yeah, it was, it was one of the first Equinox Short shows. It's, it's, it's Strauss. Then they had some sort of a. I, I can't remember what concert it was because I 
because once I saw him coming down those stairs and that spotlight. I, I remember this. Life. It was part dreaming. It was, was I'm very dreaming. I started singing. It, it, it was. It, it was. Yeah, I, I think I remember that. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was, part, it was the, the set was part of Chicago set. They had they had Chicago set on the stage, and there was a stair, uh -huh. and then we kind of set up around it, and then I had the amazing idea to make a grand entrance, like Miss America, uh -huh. down the stairs. You know what I mean? Mr. Wonderful. Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> See, I was fantastic from the it beginning. It's all about the show, man. That's fantastic. And they just brought tears to my eyes because I just popped back in my memory. I had there in the den directing your buddies and the spotlight. Oh, my gosh. Everything's going on. Started, Started early. early. Uh, that's a good story, <laughs> Mama. So well, I'll tell you what. Great. I would end up being a singer of some kind, too, because... We have proof of it today because we have cassette tapes of Clay being a disc jockey and playing oh, no. and sitting along with every part of the song while, while, while it was playing. And then when it was over, he would tell all about it and introduce the next song. <laughs> and then he'd sing every part of that song and it's you just in their blood. That takes that. That will, uh, that will verify that. You need to find those. It's in their blood to do this. Oh, man. That's... He talks all the time. When he's not singing, he's talking. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the opposite he... of that is Jeremy was a petrified, oh. shy child that hid behind his mother until he was 11 years old. And yep. he was 11 years old before I could talk him into walking in the store by himself and buying a little bread. And when he came out, I had to force him out of the car to go. I said, you can do this. It's okay. I can't do I'm it, Mama. The door. I can't do it, Mama. You go in, and I'm going to watch you walk out. It's going to be okay. Nobody gonna, nobody's going to get you. So I forced him out. He was white knuckling the dash. Well. He gets out. He goes in, gets the bread. And when he comes to that glass door to come out, he had the biggest smile on his face. <laughs> and that was red. I, I had a ride. He was short breath, smiling, I just, I did it. Oh my goodness. Well, well that was a, I've had that problem with life. The opposite strategy, yeah, I was, I was kind of uh, obnoxious, <laughs> I think, with my. He's the extrovert from the beginning. Yeah, he's, he's got a son. He's got a son. Thank goodness. It's kind of good. Well, Jeremy, he went from shy child to Mr. Motormouth, too. So I can, I can tell you an embarrassing story about Jeremy. Uh, when we were in Costa Rica in college, um, we were down, and this was before the, the switch went off in Jeremy's brain, where he went from being, mm -hmm. uh, having anxiety stuff to being like, I don't care what anybody thinks, I'm doing this, and uh, you know, just breaking down the walls. We were in Costa Rica, and uh, we had gone to a salsa club and left by our host and said, y'all just have fun, I'll come back and get you. And then in the middle, Jeremy says, I gotta use bathroom. And I said, Well, there's a bathroom right over there. And it was literally, it was a swinging, like swinging bar doors with what you could see Saloon all through doors. it. Saloon doors. <laughs> and there was a hole in the, in the floor. And uh, so it, like, it wasn't the kind of bathroom that I needed. That's not, is that's what he's saying. <laughs> he said, We got to go. And so we left that club, and it was like midnight, and we're in San Jose, and everything's closed. And it went from bad to worse to worse. Um, and he, then he kept just, he kept saying, We're gonna get stuck here. And somebody's gonna, we're gonna get arrested. Somebody, we're gonna have to have our moms come fly down. How are we gonna get back home? We're lost in San Jose. And I mean, it just got worse. And it kept building up, building up, building up. And finally, we found a place where he could, um, like a hotel or something. It was a casino. Or oh, the casino. casino. Yes, I'm glad you remember the casino. And, we, and I remember just watching the blackjack table the whole time Jeremy was in Well, that's, that's how my nerves hit me. It's like I would have a panic attack and it would have this physical effect on my body yeah. and then I'd have to go to the bathroom or whatever. You're physically ill. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. physically sick. Oh. I, and I'm telling you, it, it is crazy how it's like it, God just flipped the switch and I went from here to here uh, in, uh, in, in the matter of a few weeks. So I'm glad that that happened, that's for sure. Well, I know that um, mom, my mother um, has a musical background um, that kind of, I think, helped shape me. And, and Mom, talk, tell everybody a little bit about your musical background. Well, my my mother and my daddy were both singers. My mother grew up in a singing family, and she said that she learned the shape notes. She learned the notes before she learned how to read, <laughs> because her, 
her, her daddy made sure that they did it. They, they were all singers. And of course, daddy, was a, he, he was really a singer. He sang with the um, a gospel quartet uh, with the... Uh, Stance Baxter's uh, group. Stance Baxter, yeah, yeah. Stance Baxter Quartet Company for a while, even for a while after they married. And then and then he quit it and went to work it on the farm, but he still, he never quit singing. He sang, it was church music that he sang. Mm -hmm. We all grew up singing. I sang, I, I sang with my sisters and my brothers, and then I sang with my cousins. We made albums. I sang with a group in Dallas. Uh, we made some... We made some uh, singing up, some gospel albums there too. So, so that's but kind yeah, of I'm all my life. That's kind so of how I, I, I grew up into it. <laughs> what about what about Jeremy's musical influence, Miss Rhonda? How, where did he, where did he get his uh, musical influence from? Well, all of his great grandparents were musical mm -hmm. uh, on his daddy's side. Uh, uh, his mother's mother. And his daddy's mother. They all they played guitar and they sang. Hmm. And his daddy plays guitar. That's and right. from the time from the very beginning, Jerry would sit in the floor with him and play the guitar. And it wasn't long until Jeremy had would get one of Jerry's guitars if he didn't have a toy one. And they would sit there and listen to music and um and play the guitars. Now hmm. I was always in choir and would sing, but I was not anything like the lane. <laughs> I just sang in the school choir. But I just think Jeremy, Jerry really influenced um, Jeremy, you know, with the music. That's, That's kind of how that all got started. And I know once it's once I started playing saxophone, mom drug me all over uh, to all every over every <laughs> private lesson that I, that we, that I could yeah. have. I had probably four or five teachers by the time I was you know, 14, and um, so. Awesome. Thanks for yeah. driving me around all, all over the place, Mama. Yeah, Mama, thanks for buying me a, a yeah. trombone and uh, and teaching me how to. Still, how to he's still playing the same trombone. I still have the same, my first trombone. I've had, what, four or five of the trombones and instruments that I've uh -huh. hence had and sold and or whatever. I still have the king. He's still got number one. Well, Jeremy would, but he dropped his off the top of the bleachers. Oh, that's a good story. <laughs> that is, I, how about I tell that story? I remember that. So, I remember he, that. I'm letting you paint a picture for you, America. Here it is. I, we're sitting in the bleachers, and, and there's those bleachers without the bottom, you know what I mean? Just with, like stuff would fall through. Yeah. And we're way up top because the band's got the cheap seats. That was high school. It was junior high. Was it high school or junior uh, high? Maybe, maybe, yeah. You know, I don't remember if it was junior high or if I was a freshman. But I remember it was a cold day. We had our band uniforms on. And I remember being wrapped up in a blanket in the, sta in the stadium. And my saxophone was sitting in my lap. And I got up to move. And my saxophone started to slide out on my lap, and I couldn't get arms out. So it, so the saxophone fell off the, out of my lap and hit the bleachers in front, and then fell through the crack all the way down and hit a cinder block on the way down. Bam! <laughs> and just went into a hundred pieces. Uh, I, I remember just carrying it with like three other people, <laughs> and I remember taking it to the repair guy, and he said, he said, look, I'll give you all the boxes of reeds I have in exchange for for the parts for your horns because it's just junk i can't fix it and then, fix it. yep and then and then the next day we mama went and bought me my first professional yamaha um saxophone which i which i still have today i should have thrown my trumpet on you dropped that horn on that's what it is. hey look i don't know what happened i, I can't be blamed i can't be blamed <laughs> Well, moms, we want to thank you guys, uh, you ladies, for joining us today. Y'all the and, best. Um, we do want to wish you happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. The uh, gifts are on the way. Cards, oh, gifts on the way. Keep, keep, uh, keep, keep going. Go. I need to, I have to ask this question. Are y'all doing okay? Are you making it all right? We're, you know, with, with the... With the COVID, we're crazy. <laughs> well, with the COVID, obviously, you know, all of our work has I, stopped. I, and, and that I, is... Uh, that is unfortunate. That's that's had a, 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 a catastrophic effect on our income. Look, our mamas are worried about. It. Mamas, don't be worried mamas though. We're we are uh, we are super blessed. We have seen crazy <laughs> generosity. People have been buying virtual tickets to our shows. We've had, yes, we've had gifts. I mean, I, I even had, I've had a, a gift show up on my doorstep from a from a, just someone who loved loved the band, mm -hmm. loves me and the family, just with with cash. It was ridiculous. Wow. So we're we're doing all right, and the light at the end of the tunnel, we can see it. We have actually a couple of jobs later on this month, so we're right. we're we're hopeful that we're going to be getting back to work real soon. Right. If not, we're coming to live with y'all. This is right. That's right. Okay. Okay. Always. I love you, and I'm so proud of both of you. Love you very Thank much. Thank you. 
Love you too, Mama. Love you. Happy Mother's Day. Love y'all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.